Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm excited to have you here with us today. We have two guests that I'm going to be introducing you uh, in a couple minutes. But first, I want to share some of our dime doors. And of course, I want to make sure that you can hear me. Sometimes there's technical difficulties. So if you could just give us a thumbs up or a smiley face, that would let us know that um, the sound is working and all technology is working. So whenever you get a chance to just give us a thumb, thumbs up. And Maureen English, you're in Pasco, Washington. I've been to Pasco, Washington, beautiful part of our country. I'm um, glad to have you here today. And Deidre Powell from North Carolina, thanks for joining us. Uh, Lila in California and Janice Schwartz in Iowa, great. Well, we're really excited to have everybody here today. And just like every other week, we're gonna start off with some of our viewers' doors, the dime doors, and then we're gonna introduce uh, some of our, the two of our exciting guests. So let's switch over to PowerPoint so you can see the latest renditions of the March door. Now, I know many of you are, are maybe catching up with January and February. Um, so through the month, we really just highlight the most current door. And here on the left, Cindy Pricer has uh, sent in her sample. I love that she used that plaid fabric as the hanging tab. And she also used an eyelet fabric for her lace balance. Very nice. And Isabel Brian in France, she added a leprechaun on her stoop. And she also has a pot of gold there. That's adorable. Really very well done. And the next two is Mona Smith on the left. And she used a bright yellow fabric for the window. I think that's probably a nighttime view, right? When you look into a house that's lit up from the inside, that's what that looks like. And her balance is a darker color. Nancy Taylor um, went pretty much the way that I did. She used a dark window uh, fabric and then a white cotton balance. Beautiful work, both of them, very nice. Susan Tillman um, is kind of gray on gray. I like that, really beautiful. And then Patty Dunnington has, um, also a very pale yellow window, I love that. And she added a beautiful, uh, I'm gonna guess it's a Labrador, uh, but maybe not, a, a puppy on the front stoop, very nice. And then Rita Jackson on the left-hand side, look how colorful and full of fun that example is. So she used a St. Patrick's Day fabric for her door and used a uh, fussy cutting, shall we say, where it literally says St. Patrick's Day greeting in the bottom part of the door. That's really adorable. And then she has a teddy bear, two teddy bears, like a mama and a papa on the bottom stoop. And she chose to use cobblestone fabric for her stoop area. Very nice. And you skip the grass. I like that. Then on the right-hand side, we have an, a tartan plaid, a green tartan plaid, which looks really fun. You used a variegated um, thread for the shrubs, right? That's Sally Curez, uh, Curaz maybe. Um, and she also used a variegated thread for the interior of the shamrock. Very nice. Patsy Morris, I really, hands off to her. I, I mean, hats off to her. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So she has a lot of different details going on here. First, her doorknob is actually a small button. And uh, instead of the door knocker being embroidered, she added some type of uh, jewelry or a little metal finding, which looks lovely. She has some gardening supplies sitting on the stoop. But maybe the most interesting feature of all is the woman who's standing on the stoop. Isn't that something? In fact, we have a little zoomed up feature of that. Oh, I love it. I think it's embroidered, but I'm not really sure. It could be fussy cut. Uh, and maybe she'll comment if she's watching and let us know wh what technique she used to add that lady. But I think that's really lovely. So, you know, it is National Quilting Month. So all over America, people are quilting, you know, one, either on a traditional uh, sewing machine or some people do it by hand. But, you know, here we're going to use our embroidery machines, right? So who better to invite to celebrate National Quilting Month than Christine Connor from Amelie, Amelie Scott Design. So welcome, Christine. She's joining us today from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, there. Hi, Christine. 
Hi. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Linda Chance. I saw her name come up. Hi there. Is she a friend of yours, Christine? I know her from Facebook. I always you see her from come up on Facebook. So isn't that fun that we get get to connect with other embroiderers over Facebook? I mean, it's really an amazing. You know, today it's just the technology is so cool that we don't even have to leave our studio and still be in touch with people. Really is, and happy quilting month! Yay! Our Yay! Month. <laughs> I know you. Every month is quilting month at your house. Yeah. I'm sure. Yes, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> So you've written two books. You have dozens of patterns and embroidery quilting, well, quilting designs for um, embroidery. And your first book was Edge to Edge on your embroidery machine. That's what year was what year was that published? Oh gosh. Uh, oh, that's a trick question, right? Yeah, that was six years ago. Six years ago. Okay. And then it was so popular. I mean, people all over the country were bought. It still is popular. Yeah. Right. It's really a, a great tool to use when someone has a quilt top, doesn't have a long arm, doesn't want to quilt by paycheck. They want to do it themselves, right? Yeah, and we price the book at $35. So if you use one design in the book one time, you're already ahead because to quilt a twin size quilt with a long armor is going to you know, cost you a lot more than that. So A couple hundred dollars, I would imagine, right? At least a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. At least a hundred. So, um, and then uh, six years went by really quickly, right? Because, <laughs> and the techniques evolve, right? As time passes, the machines get bigger, the sewing field gets bigger. That is true. Magnetic hoops come into play, which yeah. makes it awesome. Weightless and I'm so grateful that you have found them and, and use them as a, as a great resource. So yes. thank you for doing that. Hey, anybody who does quilting on their embroidery machine, you need to get a magnetic hoop. It will save you time. It, aggravation is just really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for inventing that. You are welcome. It's been, you know, my uh, total joy on my end. So let's bring up PowerPoint so I can show you. Um, hello, Isabel um, from from <laughs> France. Nice to have her there. You met her last in yeah. Las Vegas. Remember, Christine? Yeah. yeah. I to see you again. Or yeah. See your name pop up. <laughs> Right. So here is um, Christine's two books, Edge to Edge on the left, and then your most recent, which is Custom Quilting on Your Embroidery Machine. So you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So the custom quilting is, you know, sometimes the Edge to Edge is one design that goes all across a quilt. Custom quilting is putting designs in certain areas. So we have a lot of square designs, triangle designs, border designs in that book. And um uh, and then we kind of spun off from that book. We have um, a lot of table runners. We created 12 table runners last year. Um, oh. And they are all, they have the applique and embroidery um, with the quilting around it. I don't know if you can, guys. Yeah, can do you have some samples? Here, let, let's bring her up full screen so you can see that. So there you can see here, you've got applique bunny with the quilting that goes around it. And... Let's see. Then we've got like a flower patch. Oh, these are. Let me stand up. You might. I might be able to. Oh, that's beautiful. Just stunning. And we've got one for seashells. Yeah. Oh, and you have some mylar that yeah, sprinkles and sparkles on the inside to give it that. I love seashells. I have like six boxes full of seashells. <laughs> well, you and me both. Yep. <laughs> Can't get enough of them. And then this is like uh, bumblebees and Beautiful. some flowers. He doesn't like some, some flowers and bumblebees. And we're doing something new for coming out in spring market with sunflowers and bumblebees. Um, oh, that's exciting. Spring market in May, right? In Pittsburgh, which is Here's a tree. Placemat. Mm -hmm. You can see the quilting in the middle. And we have this gorgeous casserole pad. Oh, These lovely. are not available yet, so don't go looking for them. I'm just, I'm just showing you a sneak preview. This love holds a 13 that. by nine inch casserole pad. Great, that's yeah. beautiful. I love it. So I kind of delved into some of Christine's products, and I thought I would show you um, what I would do with them. So if we switch over to PowerPoint. Uh, well, first, if you're any of the product that you're looking for of uh, 
edge to edge of Christine's, you're going to find over at AmeliaScottDesigns.com. That's her website right there. And, you know, it's easy to navigate her website. So jump over there um, after the broadcast, right? Yes. <laughs> So I designed a, a cheater quilt, I call it. We have specific software that uh, allows me to do that. It's my fabric design software. And then I literally print that, have that quilt printed. And that quilt measures um, 54 by 72 inches. So I dug into her expansion pack number 11 and selected the diamond design. And you can see it's a vertical design. It's really going to fill a, a hoop very nicely. So... I took it into my software and repeated that design to, to fill the width and length of the quilt. So I have columns that are vertical and rows that are horizontal. And if I took the time to count, it would probably be about 49 um, about 49 uh, repeats. And so I preview it in black thread. That always gives me, you know, the strongest view of the actual quilting design. And it's probably not the thread I would use to actually quilt the project, but it lets me see how those two design elements, the quilting and the quilt top itself are going to either compete with each other or complement each other. And so frankly, in my personal opinion, I wouldn't use such a, a uh, geometric pattern on that geometric quilt. Too many lines competing with each other. But let's go ahead and take a look at it in pink. So if you had to use something that you thought didn't really complement, then you could you know, select a thread that maybe complements and blends a little bit more easily like the white wood here. <coughs> so you have other expansion packs or other designs also in that edge to edge uh, expansion pack 11. This one is the circle design. Now, Christine, I imagine this is very popular, this design. Mm -hmm. Right, it's probably one of the most used designs I would think out of that pack because it, you know, it's bubbles, circles, it, yeah. it could go yeah. with, you know, uh, nautical themes, babies, or just very pretty deep. well. Yes, very, yeah. deep. very, very versatile. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. Again, that, you know, we're going to, you know, butt them up to each other horizontally, nice and snug, close to each other, actually touching, and then a vertically, same thing. And here it is in pink. I like that. That's pretty. But the pink thread is really going to pop on that white. So um, white fabric. So maybe the white is a better choice. But, you know, this is a great way um, that I use to preview my, uh, my projects. Because often, you know, you don't know till it's stitched, right? And even yeah. though we all have seam rippers, it is definitely not my uh, favorite tool in my sewing room. I'll use it, but I don't want to use it. So, okay, let's take a look at expansion pack number seven. Now I asked you earlier about this design, you call it the loops design. And th this is another very popular one, correct? Yes, yes. And you know, it's so versatile, again, just like the bubbles. So um, I I don't actually think I previewed this on the fabric, but I wanted to show you in blue columns and black columns so you could see just how many repeats that is. So it's a big job quilting with your your embroidery machine, right, Christine? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it takes a little bit of time, but you know, it, but it's worth it because then you can say you did the whole thing all by yourself, and that's what's most important to me. Is you know, I don't want to say, oh, I'm a quilter, but I didn't quilt. Yeah. How many expansion packs do you have, Christine? Um, oh, uh, we're up to 12 and then we have two jumbo. Oh, the jumbos are out now. Yeah, we released jumbo one. We just released jumbo two. And that's for your um, machines like the Brother and the Baby Lock with the, the Solaris and the In Innova. Um, no, the Luminaire. The Luminaire, yeah. And the Great. Font Icon and... Yeah, the big machines, big hoops. But the large file is still the same large size. So if you're able to use expansion pack 1 through 12, the large file, you can use the large file in the jumbo packs too. Right. And the run stitches, right? So many machines will allow you to increase the size, correct? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can shrink them a little yeah. bit. 
Right. And you just have to remember that when you take a design that's really, really big, that's, you know, size for a specific hoop, let's say a seven by 12, and you want to blow that up to like 10 by 16, now your flowers or your bubbles or your diamonds are going to be very far apart. So it may, it will stitch, but it may not be the look that you're really going for. Um, someone else had a question about what kind of software do I use for that preview? I use my quilt planner to uh, preview my software and that's available from Dime. And then someone else wanted to know, um, hang on one second. Oh, Christine, uh, do you use the Janome 15,000? You have that machines for a few years and you're, and this Spalavis is still learning how to use it. So Christine, what machines do you use at home? No, you know, um, I'm not made of money, but um, I, I don't have any Janome's because I have I have a lot of machines here. I have a Baby Lock Solaris. I have a, a three Berninas, a 880, a 700. Um, and then I have a Fof Icon and a Creative a Fof Creative 4.5. So we got a lot of machines. It's, you know, I would love to, an E16, a Bernina E16. I'd love to have more machines. I just don't have any room to put them. <laughs> That's the truth. Right? We are out yeah. of our house. so Right. Yeah. And you know, every machine on the market today is a great machine. I mean, they all have wonderful features. You know, there's reasons to have multiple machines because not every machine has the same feature. Yes. But you know, I always say that it's really best to establish a relationship with your local sewing machine dealer and buy the machines that they sell because it's important. That's where you get your education and your support for you know, fixing the machine or, right? That's exactly what I tell everybody who writes to me and says, what machine should I get? I tell them the exact same thing because if you you if you if buy a, mach a machine, you're gonna be at the dealership a, a lot for classes and stuff. So you better make sure you like your dealer. And I right. love your dealer. So. Yeah, you have a great deal dealer, Kathy Baum. to be a Foth Bernina and Baby Log dealer. So those are the machines that I own. So. Right. Yep. And then, you know, then you you kind of dive into that brand and you you become an expert on it also. You, right. Yeah. All, all of us, you know, so there's no harm in just sticking to your dealer. That's important. Yes. OK, let's see. Uh, Misha Pennington wants to know, is it just hard to make these in a 24 by 150 hoop? It's my machine's largest. No, it's not hard. Right. No, um, no, and you want to use a small file, small file size. Um, if you find, if you ever find that the design is tight in your hoop, it's better to just reduce it a little bit because you definitely want to have a little wiggle room up and down, left and right for connecting mm -hmm. the designs. So, um, you know, yeah, and she'll just do more hoopings, right? Yeah, that's all. That's no all. big deal. Okay, so on your second book is custom quilting on your embroidery machine. Now you shared some of those beautiful table runners earlier. Yeah, um, those are not in the book. Those are, um, those are separate, sold separately. Right, but that technique where now instead of the quilting design traveling over every patch or every applique, now in custom quilting, it accents those specific pieces, correct? <laughs> Yes, yes. Right. There's a lot of square designs in there and rectangular designs. So those make great border designs too. And, you know, we, we tried to give you many sizes. So like if there's a design that you like, you would get it like in a four inch, six inch, eight inch. So that you could fill the block with that design. Well, before we delve into the custom quilting, Susan asked, how, any tips on how do we arrange the columns perfectly straight up and down? So since this is your product, I'll let you share your tip and then maybe I'll share one if it's mine's different. Go ahead. It's real easy. We make a template. We stitch out a template and we just lay the template right on the cloth, pin it on, and then we hoop around the template and then remove the template. So you can see it exactly. And all a template is, is a stitch out of the design. So you can see when you lay that on there exactly where everything's going to stitch and super, super easy. Right. And Susan, sometimes it's all in the edge to edge book. That's all it is all in the edge to edge. Right. But I know sometimes when I'm in the middle of the quilt, I feel like I'm out at sea without vision of the coast. Right. You don't know if you're straight. 
So I have done multiple things. I uh, will press a crease in the quilt before I start, before I layer it so that I have some kind of vertical alignment. Um, I, I use a friction pen, the removable to draw a straight line, maybe two or three across the width of my quilt so that um, I have multiple reference points. But whenever you use those pens, please test them on the fabric and so forth. I have never had an issue with them coming back, but I'm sure if there's a quilt that I absolutely fall in love with and then mark, it won't come out. So, you know, that's just a, a good way to do it. And also I, I use um, seam lines within the yes. quilt itself as yes. guidelines. And that's something sure. else I have everybody on the template draw a horizontal and a vertical line in the middle of the template, just right over the stitching with a ballpoint pen. And yeah. then you can use that. That helps me keep straight because I think quilters tend to be very OCD. So if something's slightly crooked, you realize yeah. it. So it helps me That's a lot. Right. And, you know, I, I'm sure you feel this way. I, I mean, we all want our quilts to come out absolutely perfectly. And when we're piecing, we are very diligent on the quarter inch seam and making sure everything is perfect. And then when it comes to the quilting, you know, so let's say that circle design that I showed earlier is probably, I'm guessing, 1,800 stitches, right? Mm -hmm. To yeah, finish, to fill that hoop, something like that. It's just a run stitch. Well, you're going to stitch that 50 times probably mm -hmm. on that same quilt. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, the first five repeats, I'm pretty focused. And then after that, phew, I mean, because when that quilt's laying on a bed, no one is ever going to notice, you know, if it's one stitch away from where you had intended, right? Right. You know, something that's funny too, every time I've done a quilt, I do that first column and then I do that second column. And while I'm doing that first and second column, I'm always thinking, oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. And then I get that third column and I start seeing more of it quilted. I'm like, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. It's a, you know, and earlier there was a, a comment here that uh, I, I, I don't know where it is right now, but this Susan, I think her name was, she said she loves using the edge to edge quilting. And she just has such a great, yeah, I'm proud to, I'm proud of when I complete a quilt from start to finish. I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment. It's wow. a great feeling. It is a good, it's good feeling for me too. I get so, yeah. I get so hyper and jazzed and right. full of energy every time right. I finish something. I think that's why I do this. Yep. I do too. Yep. It's a very exciting. Okay. So we're working, we're, we're talking about custom quilting. So let's jump back over to face to uh, PowerPoint so you can take a look at, so this is the new custom quilting book. And of course she has um, actual quilt patterns in here, right, Christine, that people can use to make these duplicate the quilts that you show. Yes. Yes. We always want to give you something to put the designs on, on, well, in the book. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two table runners and four quilts, and they're fairly simple quilts to make. I was trying to think of, you know, what are some quilts that you might like to make? To Great, that's good. So I designed another cheater quilt in my software, and I took two of the designs that are included in your custom quilting book from the Bahama Breeze collection. So one is that circle butterfly, and the other is the hibiscus corner. And that's, so early, that yeah. circle butterfly is my, one of my favorite designs. I hope y'all like it as much as I do. Yeah, I love the movement of it. And, and it, you know, just really accents any kind of block because, you know, it's circular. It can fit in a square really well. So I used it to decorate this quilt top. Now yeah. you'll see that I have the, the uh, butterfly design is shown in black. And then that hibiscus design is shown in red. When I actually stitch this, I will do it all in the same color, but I thought it would be helpful for you to see how that goes. Eileen, so, you know what I love about how you did that? It looks like you used one of the larger butterfly designs and then one of the smaller hibiscus designs. And I didn't even think of that. I That didn't even cross my mind, but I love how you did that. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. But isn't it amazing how people use your product in a different way? Something that you had never intended. I, that just feels great, doesn't it? I love that. I love that. That's cool. Okay, so now the next thing you have to do on any kind of quilt is put a label on it, right? Yes. 
So these two labels are yours. So why don't you talk about them a little bit, Christine? Okay, so these are old, old quilts, old labels. Um, I was just kind of starting to play around with digitizing and stuff when I got these. Um, but uh, the first one with the fish and the lotus flower or the water lily are um, was on my bedspread for years and years. My dog put a hole in it. <laughs> but. Um, so, but one thing I do want to point out is that that was used with rayon thread. So the colors have kind of faded over the years and through the washings. Um, um, and if I had had a uh, better software, I don't even think my software back then allowed me to edit lettering today. Oh. It, it all does. But um, you can see where it says quilt top by Christine. I would have loved to have had a little bit more space between the by and Christine. Sure. And, the, and, and labels are so much, you know, they add such character to a quilt. I don't know why I've stopped doing them um, because as I was pulling these out, I was thinking, you know, it's fun to put a label on. But um, the the next one is a, a an older quilt. It's an art quilt that I did called Winter in the Twilight Zone. And it got that name because my son, um, I asked him what he thought, and he, the first thing out of his mouth was, I don't know, it looks like winter in the twilight zone, so that's what I called it. And uh, on the back, I had a lot of fun because, okay, I'm probably dating myself, but if you've ever seen the um, twilight zone, they always have an opening uh, monologue, and so I tried to create that with uh, the label says, Christine Connor, mother of two, living in the year 2008, about to make her first artsy quilt. Little does she know she was about to create winter in the twilight zone. Eerie music plays. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's great. So Chris, that's on the back of the label, and that was kind of fun to do. Yeah. You need to make uh, labels with an audio chip, right? So you yes. can actually have a sound message. You know, I love that. We you know, my, go ahead. stuff behind the labels, like write something on fabric and hide, hide a message. That would be fun. Yes, absolutely. You know, my oldest sister, Mary Pat, she's a, a prolific quilt maker and she always, her labels, she calls them love notes. And so she writes out a beautiful like poem or prayer to the recipient. And it's really, it's very lovely. I wish I had a, an image, I don't, but I can show you a handful of my labels over the years. So this goes back, oh my goodness, a really long time, 204. But at this time, um, I would make a quilt label and then fuse it to the back of a quilt before I quilted it so that I literally quilted the label into the background itself because that way, you know, it could never be removed. I thought that was pretty slick at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we've moved on. So uh, my other image is of a very busy quilt called black and white with sprinkles. This was from um, a book that I wrote several years ago. And this is reversible piecing. So it wasn't really appropriate to add the label during the quilting process. So this one is just fused right in place. But more recently, I use this label attachment method where I embroider on a square of fabric and then turn it into a right, uh, half square triangle and secure it in the corner of the quilt with the binding. I and love I love this technique because I, you know, the label is always an afterthought to me. You know, it's all about the creation of the quilt top and then the actual quilting. And then it's like, oh, where did I, you know, I have to add the label. So now I can do it at the last step. Um, on a good day, I would actually hand sew that long edge to the quilt back, but on my traveling samples probably aren't actually hand sewn. So this one documents a, a uh, the circus quilt that I did for uh, my book, machine embroidered quilting and eight easy lessons. This is a label that I um, added to a quilt that I made for my sister on her 50th birthday. And I'm sorry that the date is on there, Marie, because I still continue to tell everybody you are 29 years old. But anyway, now the secret's out. And then we welcomed a, a new member to our family in 2016, Evan, and this is my niece's little son. So I included a biblical phrase, a biblical verse, uh, Jeremiah's, for I know the plans I have made for you, declares the Lord. And then welcome to the family. So, you know, it's those kind of personal touches that you can add to a quilt that really make it your own. And it means so, so much to the person that you give it to.
Yeah. And there is more that you can add, but I'm going to allow our next guest, Ashley Jones, to share some thoughts on what you can add to a quilt label. So welcome, Ashley. Thanks for joining Hi. us. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Ashley, Eileen. Where, where are you today? I'm at home in Puerto Rico today. Isn't that fun, right? Yeah. So yeah, thanks for coming out of the sun to join us here in the studio. Exactly. And yeah. So, Ashley, I know you have some great samples, but um, you want to share some while yes, we're... absolutely. Okay. So maybe we'll bring Ashley up full screen so we can see what she's got for us. So um, on the uh, terms of quilt labels, I do have some of those, but I wanted to start by saying, I see that there was a question about what fonts to use. Um, and so when you're stitching something really small, using a micro font is uh, really important because your font um, are specifically digitized so that they can shrink down um, to like three millimeters even, which is really small. And so using those specifically designed fonts can give you crisp lettering whenever it's really tiny. So um, those fonts are great for things like recipe towels. So you can see those uh, really tiny fonts. That's um, gorgeous. Also, Just thank beautiful. You. you can yeah. also use them on things like handkerchiefs. Lovely. Uh, they're great for putting poems yeah. on handkerchiefs. And you know, uh, Ashley, I'm going to stop you there because I didn't really introduce you properly. Ashley Jones is the lead educator at Designs and Machine Embroidery. She is our inspiration consultant and travels all over America teaching embroidery. So, I, I mean, I've learned so much from Ashley over the years. And of course, I love going to her events and seeing her samples. They're beautiful. And a couple of years ago, the three of us did an event together yeah. in Columbus, Ohio, which was really fun. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was. And Ashley also does a lot of video for us. And we're going to be sharing some of those tips on how to find her in a little bit. So um, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Ashley. Thank and you. forgive me for not introducing you properly. That's OK. Thank you, Eileen. Right. So, you um, and just a few other things we use uh, those miniature or micro fonts for our um, patches. They're great for that. A lot of our patches are really tiny. Um, and then um, Eileen created this really cute lace collection that's lace charms. And I put my monogram on the purse charm and I had to use that miniature font for that um, design. So then back over to the quilt label since it's quilting month. Um, these are a couple of labels that I've created over the years that um, I really like um, showing them for teaching. So when I created them, um, I actually created a duplicate so that I show in my event. So I actually created a quilt out of this fabric and I actually used my Perfect Embroidery Pro software to bring in a picture of the fabric and created the shape of this whale from the fabric. So this was the quilt label um, with the fabric and it kind of matched. So that's one of the things that I did. So you didn't really need any drawing skills, right? Um, no, you do not. Uh, yeah. Perfect Embroidery Pro will actually allow you to auto trace if it's a nice clean image. So I was able to do that. Um, and the way that I usually do my quilt labels is I actually stitch um, a fusible um, type interfacing so that whenever I turn it inside out, it turns my edges. You can see I have a hole there. And so it actually turns my edges under. And so now I can fuse this down and then whip stitch it on. So it holds it in place while I'm working. Awesome. Uh, so that's one of the things that I like to do. And then this I learned from a quilting friend years ago. And I think it's a wonderful um, thing. So this quilt label I created, and this is just um, a regular quilt label that I would then whip stitch onto the back of my quilt. But one of the things I learned from a quilter was um, using it as a pocket and then actually having scraps of the fabric in the actual quilt label. Quilts are um, heirlooms. They will be around for years and years to come. So once they're worn out and have some areas that need repair, you won't be able to find that fabric. And so if there are some scraps of the fabric inside the label, that can easily be removed and um, possibly repairing any holes in the quilt from the exact fabric that you use. So that's one of my favorite tips for quilt labels. You know, Ashley, some um, uh, have asked, do you use uh, micro thread? So you want to talk a little bit about needles and thread that you would yes. use? 
tiny fonts go ahead absolutely so when you're stitching those really tiny fonts for them to be legible um, you need to use a thinner weight thread and it's usually a 60 weight thread that you'll be using um, the reason that we want to do that is because our 40 weight thread actually bulks the letters up uh, too much and that's why they're not as legible but micro fonts are specifically digitized to be this tiny so they have areas um, that yeah, would not I, I have an image of that um, okay that I could go ahead. So, so the and normally, whenever your font over to PowerPoint, is, it would overlap. But the miniature font actually don't have an overlapping area, so that you don't have that uh, pile of thread in that location. So um, you can see the micro font um, on the left where the columns don't overlap, and look how tiny that little patch is. So you can actually shrink the font down to three millimeters. And as long as you're using that 60 weight thread, they are still legible. Those fonts are built into our Perfect Embroidery Pro and our Word Art and Stitches. And then Eileen's gonna show you another really fun place to get those. But you also wanna use a small needle. So a 65 um, needle for this tiny thread for these tiny fonts. That small um, needle makes a small um, puncture and the thread will fill it. So if you use a needle that's too big, it's making too large of a hole in your fabric for that skinny thread to fill. So those are some really good tips for using those uh, tiny fonts. But make sure they're digitized to be that small. If you shrink a regular font down that's built into your software that small, that does not necessarily mean that it's going to stitch out um, well if it's not digitized for that reason. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you for your tips. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, one thing that is so neat about meeting Ashley is when you go to an event um, with one of our dime events, these are the kind of tips that you're going to learn. You're going to learn all kinds of really technical and also inspirational techniques that help you expand your embroidery skills. And um, like we have several events coming up in the next near future. So on PowerPoint, we can share that and you can see that Ashley is going to actually be doing a stitch lab in Corpus Christi down at Singer Sewing Shop. And then um, all of our educators are really as passionate about embroidery as you are and as I am and as Ashley and Christine for sure. So this is the list of upcoming events. We have all brands in San Antonio on March 20th, um, Sandy's Make It Sew in Livonia, Michigan. And then Fairview Heights at Jackman Fabrics, that's where you're going to find Ashley. And Cheryl Burnett will be at AAA Sewing in California. You could find all this information on our Inspired by Dime a website. But, you know, I encourage you to go to an event. Boy, that is where you really learn about um, all this great fun techniques. So I, I'm going to show you where you can get that um, software, right, Ashley? Yes. Okay, so where do you get those micro fonts? Well, most certainly you can get it at an event when you go to, to an event. But if you're not in an event, you can get it through our embroidery tool shed, which is that free downloadable embroidery software that you get at dzgns.com. And it, that's the software that will allow you to copy, paste, size, and um, you know print templates, do the the kind of basic skills that we all need software for. And once you have that installed on your computer, you can then, um, and here's where you would download it, and it's free, and we also have it available for Mac, and that's free also. So all of that information you'll find on the website. Um, and once you have it installed on your computer, down in the right-hand corner, you'll notice a shopping cart. So if you click on the shopping cart, you will be presented with a list of software programs and font collections that are available for purchase. If you already have some of our software, they will be populated in this window. So once you click on the shopping cart, and this is when you would select your micro font. So it is font pack number two, and you click on the ellipse, those three little dots and click on buy now. And when you click there, it will take you to the website to purchase all 11 micro fonts. Now these are not 
alphabets. These are true fonts, true embroidery fonts, and you're going to have uppercase, lowercase, and digits. So it's beautiful, beautiful embroidery micro lettering that's un unlike any that you'd find anywhere else. Look at that dime. I mean, it's amazing, right? So, and lots of styles here, 11 different styles. So I would imagine you're going to find something for all of your needs. When you're in the shopping cart, uh, when you're purchasing your your collection, you can enter your dealer, there's your zip code where you live and choose your dealer. And then your dealer will participate in that sale. Of course, this is all downloadable. You don't actually have to go to the dealer. You can purchase it when you're at an event. Um, and then once you have it downloaded, you will click activate and you'll fill out the registration form and you will be provided with the serial number in the email that gives you you know, the activation code, and then it's installed on your computer. And so those 11 micro fonts are available this week for um, $179.99 instead of $199.99. So we're really excited to introduce that at, the, um, at that reduced price. So sweet, right? Yeah, and what's nice about micro fonts is you can't take a regular font and, and shrink it down. I think like Ashley, Ashley was saying, because you'll get, um, you won't have a very pretty experience when you're stitching it out. Let's just right. go. That, right, you get the stitches um, layering on top of each other. And then your E's and your A's and your letter C's all close. And now it's just kind of like our rectangular mess of thread, right, Ashley? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, um, we're excited to be able to offer this to you. This is kind of a first time for us to uh, allow someone to purchase the uh, micro fonts outside of a whole software program. So it's very exciting um, for us here. And I know that many people just want to do basic um, embroidery design manipulation and print a template and they want to do some lettering. I mean, lettering is the number one reason why many people get an embroidery machine. And once they stitch the fonts or especially the small lettering that's on their embroidery machine, they may feel they need a more sophisticated package and this would answer that need. So um, we're excited to have that available for you this week. And then next week, we have, um, we're going to be talking, we're still celebrating the um, National Quilting Month for sure. And I'm going to be working on the waitlist quilter because, you know, we, it's fun to talk about the designs, right, Christine, and the hoops and all of that. And that's all fine when you're just in a small area. But if you're really going to do a quilt, like next week, this quilt will be finish. This is a K Fawcett quilt, his red ribbons. And I've been working on this at home. This is just the, the center medallion, but it's going to be 85 by 85 inches. Wow. And we're going to quilt that next week. So I'm so excited to share that with everybody. So you'll bring your questions and, uh, and I'm sure people have questions today for you, Christine and you, Ashley. So um, ask away before we sign off. Okay, so Sherry Hernandez, you missed the size needle recommend recommendation. So Ashley, why don't you address that? Um, so for stitching the micro fonts, a 65 uh, nine needle is recommended. Uh, you can go a little uh, bigger. I will give one more tip about the needle is because that needle is so small, the eye of the needle is also small. So do not expect your machine threader to work when you absolutely need it the most. I was mm. just going to add that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the needle uh, threader of your machine will most likely not go through the eye of that tiny needle. So a 65.9 is my uh, recommendation. Yes, you got to do it the old way, the <laughs> licking and the, the threading. <laughs> so Misha wants to know where the event in Florida on April 4th is. That's at um, a and White Sewing. What it's town is that in, Ashley? That's Holiday, Florida, and it's uh, just a little north of Tampa. Okay, great. And then Becky Stanford wanted to know, are there additional micro fonts that um, additional as to what you already have in word art and stitches? No, they are not additional. They are the very same fonts that are in word art and stitches. So if you already own word art and stitches, do not purchase these micro fonts. It would be redundant. But thanks for asking that. 
Let's see. Yeah. Oh, and Sharp Needles, uh, Deborah Jones piped in and said they're best for quilt fabrics. Well, you're not kidding. That is the right needle to point to use um, when you're stitching on quilts because they're all cotton, right? Right. To woven. Let's see. What else? What other questions do we have? And Elizabeth Curver, you, Culver, you said the events are worth going to. Well, I'm so thank you for saying that. I know our educators, Ashley, they all work so hard to really give a professional and inspiring event so that people walk away and say, wow, I learned so much today. And that's our whole mission. Oh, and Joanne Banco. Hi, Joanne Banco. We all love Joanne Banco. Um, you wonder if, Christine, you have a preferred batting. Um, yeah, for the quilting, I use the Quilter's Dream Request. It's a very low loft batting um, because I don't want the batting to be too thick. Especially okay. the bigger the quilt gets. Uh, do you have a preference that you like to use, Eileen? I like to use 100% wool batting because it's very lightweight and it has a beautiful loft. It's not thick, but mm -hmm. it, it it remains puffy, you know, between your stitches. So I I mean, I just love it. You'll see next week. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I'm have to try Let's it. See. And Benita wants to know, is there a list of all the magnetic coops for the Bernina 700? Yes, there is. So um, if you would, um, where's my, Christine, if you would talk a little bit about what, you know, just quilting and I'm going to find the compatibility chart. How about that? Oh, okay. Um, I think uh, for the, um, um, the I, I think you should say something about what's happening in spring. Um, I don't oh. know if it's tipping the... Oh, no, that's fine. Um, well, I've been well, telling in, everybody about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, already right now, we have the um, the new Bernina hoop is available, which is... Um, the maxi size. For the maxi size, hoops. right. So what I've been doing is using this uh, the... Uh, the jumbo size on my 700 series. But as you all know, the left side of that's cut off because the maxi... The uh, 700 series can only handle the maxi size hoop. You can still use it like I used it for all the custom quilting. But um, Eileen, listen to me. And okay. she's created the one for the maxi. Uh, yes, size. absolutely. So I listened to her. And then she also said, oh, um, well, I also have a fop. Yes. So we would like some bigger hoops for fop. So yeah. coming out, but probably not till June, will be the 200 by 200. Yay! A nice square hoop. And the 360 by 200. So we're really excited to get them out. Just in tomorrow. June, did you say? June. Yeah. Fingers crossed, June. In fact, I mean, we go through several prototype renditions and uh, the most recent one just arrived. And so we are testing today and tomorrow and then ready to roll. So, but we're confident that because the last one worked too. So anyway, I, well, I it's a lot someone, of testing. I saw someone just say they're, they want the big one and the small one. I think that's a good choice because I have the biggest uh, that my machine can handle. And then I have a smaller version because sometimes you want a smaller magnetic. Yeah. Right. So, oh, I, uh, so I have to go back in, I guess, and share that compatibility chart. Is that what I need to do? Yeah. And so while you're looking for the chart, Eileen, I'll just um, third that um, the big hoop and the small hoop, because if you are wanting to do edge to edge quilting, just as Christine said, you want the largest hoop your machine will handle because that's fewer times that you have to reposition your hoop. And so if you're doing something like towels or shirts or other things that you would want to do a regular embroidery design on, a lot of times that biggest hoop, we're not putting a design that large in it. So I definitely agree with the having one um, that's the biggest sewing field of your machine and then a smaller one for those regular embroidery designs. That's right. And so on our website here, I'll just show you. So www.dzgns.com where it says shop now, go to hoops. And this is like the top main page. And then as you scroll down, it's, it has in faint blue, it says click here for the compatibility chart. And when you click there, um, you also have, you can, you can access it by brand, but it's best to just click here to see the entire chart. And then you'll be presented with this PDF. And on the left-hand side is the brand and model number of the machine. At the top in the, in the blue rectangles is the hoop size. 
And then the fields in between where they uh, merge, intersect, it will tell you the model number that's appropriate for your machine. So we do make for Baby Lock and Brother, we make numerous sizes, Viking and Foff, and also Bernina. We do not make it for the Janome 15,000. Their hoops have a attached to the machine in the back of the machine, and that it results in a hoop that's too heavy. So that's why we don't offer them on the 15,000. We've tried to work around that with our engineers and it has not been possible. We do make hoops for the Janome embroidery only unit, which is the 500 and I think 550E. So we do have several hoops for them. Um, and uh, Ms. D. Clark, you would like a hoop for the new largest Janome 550E. Yeah, we've had a request or two for that. So you could probably look for that, you know, in a year. Uh, or not in a year, later in the year. So they take a while to develop and we also have to wait for the market to catch up with it. So, um, and Isabel, uh, Brian, you would like a large one for the designer Epic. I think we were talking about FAF, but that's, it's the same. So new hoops will be coming out for you too. And why isn't the ruler put on the magnetic hoop when you purchase? Cassandra asked that. A couple of weeks ago, I explained because those hoops are actually um, compatible with numerous models within a brand. And believe it or not, the center point of those hoops is different on each model. So that's why we don't apply them. We, we do have a, a, a very easy way that we teach you how to apply it. And um, so you can either check our blog for that in new hoops will be coming with that information in the hoop. But basically you're gonna stitch a crosshair on stabilizer and then extend that crosshair with a marker out to the edge of the hoop and apply your ruler in that fashion. And then you'll be nailed perfectly. The only thing that's really important about those rulers is that they are not so much aligned with the center, but aligned with each other because you wanna make sure that that vertical line you know, on the top of the hoop and the bottom of the hoop is in, is square or straight. So that when you are lining up, let's say a seam on a quilt, you wanna make sure that it's straight. So don't get real hung up about the inches, the metric, doesn't matter, they're just lines. Okay, and what about the five, the Bernina five series? Yep, we most certainly have hoops for the five series. You'll find that on the compatibility chart. So next week we're back at one thirty at one o'clock Central Time, and we're gonna get out that weightless quilter, and you're gonna you know pressure on for me, right? I gotta get those borders onto this quilt, get it done. But I can't wait to finish this quilt. I'm excited. Thank you, Christine and Ashley. You have been wonderful in sharing all your tips and techniques. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having us on. Okay. Absolutely. All right. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.